Thank you for choosing Time Clock 365. I'd like to give you a short run through of our system. Right now you're looking at the dashboard. It's the gateway to the entire system. You can choose from different languages. And of course you can clock in and clock out. Um, you should know that there are four different ways to clock in and clock out of the system. There's this way right here, which is through, a, through the website. You can download our app, Time Clock 365, to your phone and clock in that way or through a time clock or a door access control. However you clock in and clock out, it will be registered immediately into the system. If it's from a computer, you'll see the IP address. If you're in a location, you'll see the actual location. And if you're doing it from a clock, it will actually say which clock you clocked in from. Now, um, you'll also be able to, as your workers or employees, will be able to request their um, time off or their absences, everything from the same place. So they can ask for either a vacation day um, or a sick leave. Um, if it is a sick leave, you can have a doctor's note uploaded to the system. What you'll do is put the dates in. They can even see their available balance of days off and press save. Once they've done that, that request will be sent to a supervisor for his approval. As a supervisor, you can either sort your um, request by teams to make sure that you're not working with an empty team during the week, or you can do it by individuals or all of your employees. However you choose to do it, you'll be able to then see exactly how many people have asked even for the same day off. You can see them as a group, and as an individual, you would be able to see their personal balances. And of course, then you can prove or deny. Um, what you can also do from the dashboard is create a new user. And what you do is basically you're putting in their full name, their email. If you just want them to be working with their username, you can do that. If you are doing it with an email and you are working with a Microsoft 365 account, put that account in here so that it can auto-sync with the rest of your 365 information. Here you're going to be able to see you're going to put in their information, whatever that information you want to fill in. You're not required to fill it all in. Here in salary, what I would like to point out to you is something called contract. We have set up a default contract, which I will show you in a moment. You as a company may decide to put in different contracts. That's going to be up to you. But you should just know that it is a way for you to sort of filter each of your workers and their requirements. The other thing that you're able to do, and it's for people that are working um, on their cell phones, like a delivery person or field workers, you may decide that you'd like to be updated on their location. You can say, I want to get an update of their location um, every two hours. Now, what I'd like to do is take you over to the contracts in order for you to see um, how that is made up, OK? Contracts work this way. We've developed a contract that's going to be for all employees. You obviously can change it. We do suggest that each company makes a couple of different contracts, for instance, for workers that are working by the hour and for maybe administrative people that are not working by the hour and don't need to get reminders about when to clock in and clock out. Here on the contract, you'll see the people that are a part of this contract and the hours that you're going to set up for them. What happens is, if someone hasn't clocked in by 8 o'clock in the morning, you would then be able to set a reminder that they would receive either to their email, email as well as if they do have the, the mobile app, to their app saying, hi, John Smith, you haven't clocked in yet. You might want to do it. You're running late. The same thing for punching out. The reason that's important is because at the end of the month, you don't want to start to see that there were gaps, that someone forgot to clock out on a Friday afternoon, and come Monday morning, it looks like they've been working three days straight. So it is an important thing for you to be able to have in your control and to monitor. There's a lot of other different parts of the contract that you might want to check. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people have asked us for is basically to monitor how long someone goes on a lunch break. So here you have an ability to have a certain amount of control over that. Play with what all of this is. You can also be putting in for overtime. If someone works about four hours a week, you can say, oh, they're going to get a certain amount of overtime. And if they work another five hours on top of that, then they're going to get even more overtime. Obviously, that's something that's very personal to every company, and you would have to work on that, what's right for you. Now, here at the bottom, something that we feel is really important is when somebody is clocking in and clocking out through their smartphone, you might want to have a little bit more understanding of what they're doing. And what we suggest is the following. You can either say, we allow you to punch in from any location. We only allow you to punch in from the location that we choose. 
or you can clock in from any location. But if you're not in the one that I expect you to be, I'd like to be notified. Have a look at this and what we again suggest is for each group or type of employees, you make different types of contracts. Now, at the end of every single month, all employees would receive a detailed attendance report. What that means, it's an attendance report of just their hours so that they would be, be able to see what hours they have worked um, and approve it. So you'll see here, these are the hours they've punched in and punched out. What they would be able to say is, no, you know what, I didn't work till five o'clock, I worked till six o'clock, and they can change it. Once they've modified it, it will have a marking that it's been modified for a manager to see. They'll go through it at the end, at the bottom of it, they can also see a report of their personal information. Once they've approved it, it goes directly to a manager, and a manager would need to approve it. A manager will see that something was modified, and he can choose how to address it. Once all of that is, is approved, it will then be sent to payroll where it can be downloaded to pretty much any payroll system. Now, the next thing I'd like to show you is um, alerts. As I had mentioned before, people are going to be getting reminders if they haven't clocked in or clocked out. But you would also want to make sure that if they still haven't clocked in or clocked out, that someone is going to be alerted to it. Here, Watchers is the supervisor. You can put more than one supervisor on each of your alerts. And basically, you should go through them. It's basically saying, I want to alert if someone didn't punch in or if they didn't punch out, if they're, if they're late. Um, you could even get alerts if um, one of your remote workers, when they arrive at a client and when they leave the, different, the client. Have a look through them. Play with them a bit to see which ones work the best for you. Um, now, what you did see probably in our system is that we have a live map with the GPS which means that you would be able to um, see your workers in relation to your customers and um, where they are during their day. It's a live map. So you would be able to check where they've been going. Again, if you did put an update in that you wanted to be notified every two hours, it would automatically show it to you. But you could also just log on and see where your workers are. You'd also be able to check their routes to make sure that they're utilizing their time correctly and to discuss it with them to help them come up with better routes in the future. Um, the next thing you'll be able to see is that we do have a spot for expenses. You can decide what type of expenses are usable for your company. So you could say gas, food, office supplies. A person who's allowed to put in for expenses would then put in the information as well as upload a picture of the bill that they paid. And it would then go to a supervisor for approval and it would be sent to payroll. Now, um, what we do also have are projects and tasks. And the projects and tasks are basically um, if you have billable hours, for instance, or again, if you have a project that you want to work on. So I'm going to give the example of a supermarket. You may be working with a huge supermarket chain um, and that you're delivering to one of their locations. You would be able to call this um, project supermarket um, two, okay? And you can give a description of what you're doing, and you can then attach it to maybe the supermarket chain or, or the company that you're, do, you're sending it to. Once you've opened that project, you would go to a task, and you can build as many tasks as you want under that project. You can also assign it to certain workers. So for instance, you'd give the task a name, you'd give it a description, you would attach it to the project that you've already made, um, and you can either assign it to a group of workers, or you can assign it to individuals and send them notification that they have a job to do. They would then get a message saying, hi, John Smith, you have a job that you need to do. Um, and on their dashboard, which I will show you in one second, they are going to see start and stop so that they will be able to start working on their project. Here in Projects and Tasks, you could also decide what dates you want them to work on and how long you think it should take. So if you have a delivery that is going to be due on a Thursday, you're going to maybe say, I want these people working on it on a Wednesday. And you're assigning how much time it's going to take to do it. Later on, when you're making all of your reports, you'll see here that we do have reports for all of these projects and tasks for you to have a detailed understanding and, again, for billable hours if that is how, what you need it for. On the dashboard, you will have... Um, a place right here to stop and start all of your projects and tasks. You will also be able to see as a supervisor, again, who's working, who's not working, and who's working on which project um, at which time. Okay? 
that's the main information of the system. Of course, if you do have any other questions, please let us know. And we are happy to do a more detailed demonstration, in particular dealing with the issues that your particular company has. Thank you very much.